How's it going everybody? Raising Hell here and welcome back to our playthrough of the military campaign for Stronghold 2. Today we're playing chapter number 5, Return to the Monastery. William has always been too trusting and this time it's been his undoing. Choosing Edwin as an ally was an ill-judged move on William's part and here I am to pick up the pieces. Olaf Grimtooth! Your days of butchering on this earth are numbered! Release Sir William and lay down your arms! I shall see to it your death is a quick and painless one! <laughs> I see war has given you a sense of humor, Matthew Steele! If you want your master back, come and get him! <laughs> I was hoping you would say that. Form up! So, you might be noticing that uh, things are sped up here a little bit as we're getting right into the episode, and that's because the episode itself took quite some time. So it was over, well over an hour, about an hour and eight minutes overall, and I felt a lot of it was just kind of boring because uh, I was playing at a generally slow pace, mostly because this this part right here especially required a fair bit of micromanagement to avoid rather heavy, heavy casualties. So what I did here is I split the spearmen up into their own separate little parties to hopefully avoid the majority, or hopefully avoid a couple of ballista bolts taking out large sections of my army. Because I've mentioned this before, but the formations in Stronghold 2 do not hold together very well when the units are actually moving. So you can set them up to column formation or something, some formation that spreads them out. But then when they actually start walking, they kind of all congregate together in the same local area. So I, I tried to separate them manually, I guess you could say, to make sure that the ballistas would do as little damage as possible. And these ballistas are absolutely essential to take out immediately. You really are to given a whole lot of opportunity to try alternatives with them. And then I also brought my lord up to hopefully help deal with some of the berserkers that are defending the ballistas, mostly because berserkers are pretty strong against spearmen, so I, I didn't want to have to deal with unnecessary casualties there. But it wouldn't, nah, it's not entirely necessary to do so. So what is really interesting about this episode is it's taken me quite a while to produce at this point. Um, this is the second time I'm recording the commentary for it, and as you might have noticed, uh, this is actually commentary that's being provided in post because obviously I edited the video down and sped parts up to make it not so long. And you might be wondering why is that required. It's mostly because of the somewhat irregular chapter structure. And by the way, this part was interesting. I was trying to get my spearman to move, and it, like every time I'd uh, left right click on, a, on an area to move there, uh, like half of them would move, and then three quarters of them would move, and then 99% of them would move, and then finally all of them, all of the units that I had selected would move. I'm not exactly sure what was causing that, but it was a bit strange. And then here we are using the catapults to knock back the berserkers. So the berserkers are obviously marching along. Our archers are going to do a pretty good job of uh, damaging them, but the, the catapults are there and firing with the intended purpose of knocking them back and dealing some damage. You're not going to deal a lot of damage to the berserkers, but it does, like, every little bit helps because we really don't have that many archers. And berserkers are pretty deadly, actually, against spearmen, especially in numbers like that. So this is almost essential. Getting back, though, to discussing the idea or, or how chapters in Stronghold 2 are presented to the player, uh, they're somewhat irregular compared to a lot of other Stronghold games in the fact that you have chapters, and then within those chapters you have a lot of individual missions a lot of the time. A lot of these missions could be considered like episodes in their own right, if you decided to split them up that way. They're long enough usually for that for it to be considered like its own standalone episode. You know, we're talking about missions inside chapters that are 30 minutes plus in length. And it's really irregular too because sometimes they'll have uh, multiple missions, sometimes they'll have like optional objectives. So it's very all over the place the way the campaign for Stronghold 2 is set up. And, and I'm just not sure how best to present it. And this, so far, I guess you could say, is not really working out the way I intended because it's taking way too much time. Ultimately, I, I can't afford for a video to take four hours of time to produce, right? 
uh, because if you think about how it works, usually is I'll play it through once just to make sure I'm familiar with how everything goes, so that way I can, you know, perform fairly well when I'm actually recording it. So in episodes like these that take potentially an hour and a half, there, that's an hour and a half right there. Uh, then I actually have to go ahead and record it, and if I'm if I'm not doing commentary right then and there, uh, afterwards I have to edit it down. Which could take anywhere, I would say about 45 minutes for the amount of time that this one took. And then I have to record uh, the post commentary on it, which of course is another 45 to 50 minutes depending upon the length of the episode. And in this case, uh, this most recent one, I forgot to, to record it. It was really weird. I could have sworn I hit the unpause button when I was recording, but it didn't just really baffles me and apparently I never looked over there. I never looked over at the uh, sound recording program and noticed that new waveforms will not were not actually showing up so that's just really odd. Odin, do not forsake me now. And it's a sad state of affairs because I lost all of that commentary. That commentary that uh, I previously spent like 37 minutes recording. That, that's a lot of time. I can do a lot in 37 minutes. So this current idea I don't think is working out. I, I might do less post maybe I can just uh, be a little bit more silent during the parts that I don't consider to be important and just cut those out. But uh, like you, as you can see right now, uh, the gameplay is being played back at uh, twice the speed. This is 200% uh, speed. And otherwise, the episodes just last a long time and they're kind of boring, I think. But ultimately, it's a, it's a compromise I'm going to have to make, I suppose, um, because I can't afford to invest that much time in a single episode. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, in regards to what's going on here, I didn't mention the walls. Uh, so I had some archers, you might have noticed them over there by the stone quarry. I brought in about four, and they were out of range of the ballistas because they were hidden behind that, that mountain there. But at the same time, the archers could actually target the axe throwers that were on the wall. So I removed one axe thrower from the wall and then continued to move along the wall because the axe throwers have less range than the archers do, so the archers will always be able to pick them off. Uh, but usually the, the big problem would be that uh, the archers couldn't get close enough to the axe throwers because of the ballistas. And, you know, okay, either the archers were too close to the axe throwers because the ballistas forced them to come in closer to the wall, or they were too far, or no, they were too close to the axe throwers, which meant that the axe throwers shot. So this was a choice. It was a toss up between too close to ballistas, too, or too far away from wall and that ballista would shoot, or too close to the wall where axe throwers could shoot. But eventually it got done. And what is going on here right now is a little tactic that I used to remove the ballistas in there with minimal casualties. You might have noticed an archer just died there because one cross, um, one ballista bolt to an archer will uh, ultimately kill it. Uh, but what is going on here is the, the ballistas, the ballista bolts don't go through walls. So I'll generally send my archer over in front of the ballista. I'll fire off a couple of arrows at the ballista doing a bit of damage. And then I'll run behind the wall for the Ballista Bolt. The Ballista Bolt will hit the wall and not damage my archer. Uh, there is an alternative way to do this, obviously. If you only have one Ballista to deal with, it's fairly easy to avoid the Ballista Bolts, even without a wall. Uh, you simply move in one direction until the Ballista fires, and then you immediately change directions. So it's certainly possible to use alternative methods to, get, to achieve this. Uh, this is just one that I personally preferred because it's a it's a bit hmm, it's a bit less demanding but now we have the the second ballista in this outermost walled area and the thing about catapults knocking the walls down is it's kind of random you're never really sure where they're going the the stones are going to land and if the wall gets knocked down like half half its height all the way around i'm pretty sure ballistas can shoot at my archers but my archers can't shoot back which really puts you in a predicament so this is kind of a a toss of the dice here whether or not you get good catapult launches the catapults throw stones in good locations so you might want to save it and then uh reload it if you if the catapult's not cooperating kind of uh, another thing you want to keep in mind here is that uh, you should try to avoid actually destroying any of the structures besides the walls. The walls 
uh, when they're deleted, they don't give you any wood. But the wooden platform towers and the wooden gatehouses both actually will, you know, give you some wood back. So later on in this chapter, when it actually moves into the, like the mission, mission number two, and you're given control of this estate here, spoiler alert, I guess, um, it, it's important not to actually... Uh, ha well, it's not important, but it helps not to have destroyed the wooden towers previous to that because you're able to tear them down or delete them, I should say, and uh, get a little bit of extra wood to start out with. That axe thrower right there is causing me a little bit of a headache, but that's why I have my lord close by. So as soon as the axe thrower is off that wall, the second wall there, uh, I'll probably be sending my lord in to deal with the axe thrower that's hiding behind the wall that I can't get with my archer. And uh, it, it goes pretty well because it's like almost an instant kill on the part of my lord. So once we get past the initial barrage, uh, the this mission becomes significantly easier. As you might have noticed here, we're basically able to progress with about one catapult and four archers, right? Plus the Lord, obviously. So so once you get past that initial part of this attack, this siege, the game gets considerably easier, I guess you could say. Uh, if you hear a noise in the background, it's because one of my devices is being annoying as hell. So just, just ignore that. Hopefully you didn't hear it. But uh, I suppose now that I brought your attention to it, you will have heard it. Um... In regards to what's going on here, I'm trying to create a breach in this, this second wall, quite similar to the job that I did with the first wall, because there are two additional ballistas that need to be removed. Those ballistas, however, are significantly closer to one another, which creates a little bit of an extra problem here, because it means that we will we'll be fired at by both of them when I try to target one. So it's a little bit more complicated to dodge two ballista bolts. It's not impossible, uh, but it gets a lot more chancy. So the wall certainly helps in the situations such as this. But, but you can see I, I'm dodging the ballista bolts. You might, might notice I quickly change directions when they shoot. Because sometimes the walls seem to glitch out and the ballista bolts go through them when they really shouldn't be. So it's just kind of like to keep it on the safe side, right? Uh, it, it also makes it easier if you play this on slower speeds, but I, I think at the moment I was playing it on like speed 30 or so. Of course, it's doubled in speed for the video because uh, it, it was just too slow otherwise, but you know, if you're having troubles actually dodging the ballista bolts, you can just pause it and do it more like play-by-play, -play, almost like a turn-based game at that point, and you should be able to dodge any single... It would be interesting to see how many ballistas it would take to bring you down if you were doing it pause by pause, because you can move, you can select and move, you can select and tell units where to move when the game is paused, which is something that's pretty unique to Stronghold 2. Stronghold 3 has a kind of similar thing, but it's really not the same at all. And of course, Stronghold Legends, you can't really do anything when the game is paused, so... Stronghold 2 is fairly unique in that regard, uh, but at the same time it creates these situations where I think the developers thought that since you could pause the game, it, was, it almost justified them actively putting in scenarios where it was almost required to play the game at a ridiculously low speed and or pause it frequently uh, throughout the mission to actually be successful. So it's an interesting decision, I guess you could say, was made there. And it doesn't seem to have been very popular because it really hasn't carried out or carried over into any of the newer Strongholds. You think like Stronghold 3 and Stronghold Crusader 2. And neither of them really have those same functions. Stop there, Steel! I have something for you. We will not die today. Men, to the coast! William! William, <laughs> I'm fine. Olaf, get Olaf, Matthew. Rest your voice, William. Go 
God be praised! Olaf has left behind most of the precious artifacts he stole from us. Well done, Sir Knight. A battle hard won by the looks of it. But our work here is not yet over. We have news of Sir Edwin heading in this direction with a good-sized army. The country is being torn apart by Barclay and his allies, and here we are again, back where we started. It's very frustrating. At least for now, however, our mission is clear. Defend. So this is kind of part two, or mission two, of this entire chapter. As I pointed out before, the chapters in Stronghold 2 are a little bit irregularly divided, I guess you could say. I will take Sir William under my care in what is left of the monastery. Sir Grey is to help me rebuild it. And as you can see here, I'm deleting those aforementioned structures for a little bit of extra wood to get our economy started because uh, wood production is going to be, as it usually is, one of the major limiting factors. You can even consider buying wood if you feel it needed, but in my case, I was simply able to get by with, uh, I think it was 10 woodcutters total. Now, if you're not familiar with this map, we've actually been here before. So in the second chapter, First Command, it's a little, <laughs> little bit confusing there, I suppose. In the second chapter called First Command, we were on this exact same map, uh, making wool and some stone for the monks to rebuild their bridge. Uh, but we were back here again, and this time it doesn't have as many trees as it used to. So apparently uh, Olaf logged out a fair amount of the wood around here. But it, it, this map has been recycled for a few different missions. There is a message from the king, my liege. Stories of your heroic exploits continue to get my blood racing, Matthew Steele. I am relieving Sir William of his title of Royal Champion and handing this mantle to you. William will be devastated when he hears of this. It must remain forever a secret. Honestly, I think the characters in this game tried to shelter William a little bit too much. I mean, he has demonstrated time and again that he is incompetent. And, I mean, there is nothing wrong necessarily with being incompetent, but don't be disappointed when more competent people are promoted over you, right? Uh, that's really not fair to be upset about such things. Even if William has all the good intentions in the world, he continually fails to act properly upon those, or he continually misjudges situations and creates, uh, uh, creates chaos and issues where there needn't be any. Like, you think about taking over Lady Saren's castle to rescue Edwin. I mean, I don't know exactly what he's doing most of the time, but it doesn't seem to be very productive. So why, why would he be disappointed if, you know, a, a more deserving uh, protector of the realm, I guess you could call it, got promoted over him? So... That's just my opinion on it. Who knows? It's a problem with the campaign in Stronghold, too. It really doesn't fit anywhere in the series. It doesn't continue the story from Stronghold 1 like Stronghold 3 does. And it just sort of stands alone at this point in time. It's also a little bit more comedic. The, the, it seems like the story characters take themselves a little bit less seriously than the characters in a lot of the other Stronghold games. So it was an interesting direction to take. Apparently it didn't perform quite as well as expected, but just just like the the animation, I guess you could call it, eh, the live action animation was not a big of a hit as uh, it could have been because obviously if you take a look at Stronghold 3, they moved back over to sort of sketched images of stuff. And same thing for Stronghold Legends, I think, too. Stronghold Legends didn't have nearly as much story. Or, or the majority of the story was actually told through the briefings as opposed to cutscenes, which personally I prefer. I, I don't like being continually interrupted by cutscenes throughout a mission, but that is just like my particular preference there. I could understand some people really are into a lot of the gameplay simply to hear or watch the story play out. The people worship you, sir. Uh, in terms of what's going on here, obviously, decided to actually stick with two food types, apples and meat. Even though there is wheat available, 
or should I say bread, uh, obviously you have to plant wheat to grind into flour to bake into bread, decided that I wasn't interested in going with that entire food production chain. You only get a little bit of extra honor from it overall, and I was more than capable of you know, creating enough food, generating enough food for this kind of population with just the hunter's huts and the apple orchards, even if they are less efficient. I just didn't feel like setting up uh, the the grain or the bread food chain. And in terms of weapon production here, we're simply going for archers exclusively. There are going to be no spearmen, mainly because archers are still pretty overpowered, I guess you could say. Uh, that was something that was nerfed, I think. Like, if you compare the utility of archers in Stronghold 2 versus games like Stronghold Crusader, uh, strong, archers in Stronghold Crusader are a lot more deadly. They have had ridiculous kind of range that could almost shoot halfway across the map if they're on top of a tower. So they were nerfed a little bit, but like, I still prefer them, but maybe that's just because I'm super defensive as a player. Um, or maybe because spearmen kind of really suck. Uh, it's it's a kind of a toss-up, I suppose, between the two of them. So you might notice there's a couple of little monks that are walking along the place. You might see them approach my stockpile. And as part of the victory conditions for this mission, uh, basically we are waiting out the clock until we're, the monks finish repairing the monastery. The monks require goods from our stockpile, though, namely uh, stone, I think. <laughs> to actually repair the monastery, so they're going to be gathering those resources from the mo uh, from my stockpile and transferring it over to the monastery to rebuild it as quickly as possible. So one way that you can prevent the mission from progressing faster than you are comfortable with is simply by preventing... Woodsmen have seen a band of enemy troops headed this way! Simply by preventing the monks from getting access to your stockpile and uh, there will be a pretty good example of this later on when this next uh, wave of enemies actually attacks because they don't attack me. They attack the monastery, basically, which prevents uh, any work from being done in the monastery, which can help you build up because if, if you allow the match to progress as quickly as possible, you will be faced with uh, continuing or... Uh, there's the invasion. You'll be faced with con invasions of increasing difficulty, I guess you could say. Yeah, so stone quarries. I'm not exactly sure what I'm busy doing there. I think I have more than enough stone at this point. And, you know, this is just basically all there is left to do until the mission ends. Uh, there isn't a whole lot here to really remark upon. Of course, you do want to put the gatehouse closer to the north, I, I I would say in terms of directions, the north side of the map, because your woodcutters are coming in that way, your storms coming in that way, the monks are going to be coming in from that direction. It just it's more efficient. Uh, we only have one punishment for our economy here, uh, the the gong pit, I guess it's called. So no rats, no crime, which is nice because those are. Both irritating, I guess you could say, in their own right. <laughs> I never liked the punishment system for Stronghold 2. Uh, and I always refer to John Schaefer of Civilization 4 as to why this is a bad idea. When they were looking into building the Dark Ages for Civilization 4, they decided to actually go with Golden Ages instead because rewarding the player was always seen as preferable to penalizing the player in, in terms of getting them to continue playing the game. And the, John Schaefer has an entire piece on it, and I wouldn't do justice by paraphrasing it, and it's worth a read. Uh, but it, that's like the the philosophy, the game design philosophy that I always go to when uh, disagreeing with the implementation of punishment buildings in Stronghold 2, and why I continue to rally against the idea of having those negative aspects to the game, even if they do like increase the realism. I don't know if you just noticed it, but there was uh, Edwin's Edwin's troops were up there by the monastery, and uh, they shoot at every monk that emerges, which means ultimately that none of the monks can actually get any of the stone and wood that they require to rebuild the monastery. So at this point, I'm just waiting for the next attack to happen, so that way afterwards I can go ahead and clear that uh, that first invasion out of by the monastery without 
risking my chaos at all because I wouldn't want to send the majority of my troops out there to get rid of rid of Edwin's first attack without first uh, making sure that I wasn't going to be attacked relatively quickly with my castle largely undefended. I also decided to use some hops farms. So for a little bit of extra popularity, we got some ale going on. I don't, I don't think I've built the inn yet, but we're in the process of doing so. And of course, we also have the kitchen built for the extra honor. I, I didn't have a problem acquiring honor in this mission, as I mentioned before, even though I didn't go ahead and make use of uh, the bread. Didn't really produce any bread at all. Could have, if I wanted to. Probably should have. Something to consider. Uh, but we don't have these very large towers that they show in a later cutscene. Just give us scouts report a large force of the enemy's men are marching towards us. We only us. have access to these really small square ones. If you if you pay attention to one of the cutscenes at the very end of this episode, you'll see that um, Matthew is standing on a relatively large round tower, which of course doesn't exist around here. Because we don't have access to them. There's the monastery, still in its state of disrepair. And there is, at last, the attack. And this attack is actually going to be attacking my keep as opposed to the monastery. So it's good to have stone defenses up in advance of this attack. There have been times when I haven't been, uh, like I haven't made enough progress to actually have stone walls, which is pretty incredible when you think about it because right here, pretty advanced compared to some of the other times I've played through this mission. And I credit that largely due to an accelerated economy being built because I had more wood. Wood really does seem to be the limiting factor in a lot of Stronghold games, which is why you tend to see a lot of uh, players mass spam woodcutter's huts, especially during the beginning of the game. Like you can see up to 20 woodcutter's huts some people will end up using. I usually use around 10 to 12, but it can certainly be scaled up depending upon, I guess, what kind of economy you're shooting for. And of course, once these logs here by the stone quarry are all logged out, our woodcutters are going to have to go a little bit further afield. But with that attack over with, it was pretty uneventful overall. I'm finally moving the bulk of my forces outside of my castle walls, and we're going to go ahead and attack Edwin's other force that is currently besieging the monastery, for what it's worth. I also included a lot of armed peasants in this one because I didn't have, I didn't feel I had enough spearmen to be decent meat shields. So the idea was the armed peasants were a cheap equivalent for, to that. I, like, I, I don't want, I don't want my archers being the meat shield, right? Even though that's what I'm building exclusively. So the archers, the archers preferably should stay in the rear. And of course, this attack is probably everything expected of it. At least none of the bodies are actually sliding down the hill there. That was something very funky about the graphics and or the what would you could think the gravity engine in Stronghold 3 is units will just slide right down a hill. As if they have no sort of resistance. It's like they're sledding down it, right? I decided to build this little outpost up here, which ultimately turned out to be an ill-advised decision basically because future attacks from Edwin target my castle not the monastery so I'm simply having a tower of uh, equivalent size down at the base of the bridge would have been ultimately more effective because those units would be capable of firing on any enemy force or an enemy hmm enemy siege that comes through from Edwin to attack my castle. So it, it would fulfill a dual purpose as opposed to this very singular purpose outpost that I built up there by the monastery. Uh, the reason I can build it up there by the monastery obviously is because that area is part of my estate here. Which you might not think. You might think that my estate would end at the bridge but it actually extends all the way up to the monastery. And right there is the second fort that I was talking about. I would recommend the second one. I wouldn't recommend building the first one. 
Uh, basically, the reason that I would recommend building a second one is because even if it's not attacked directly, it helps make sure that the monks that are walking by will not get shot by archers, enemy archers, because that would increase the amount of time it takes to complete the monastery. Because obviously the monks are susceptible to archer fire. It's one of the main reasons why I advocate for that. And as you can see, it's 10% it's complete at the moment, so we still do have a ways to go. And I am playing this, I think, at like 90 speed most of the time. So that's 90 speed in game is like the very fastest. And in addition to that, I have sped it up here to play back twice as fast. So this sort of gives you an idea of exactly how slow and how long this chapter took. I'm personally in favor of chapters that don't really take any longer than an hour, even if you're playing it a bit conservatively. But these these Strongwell 2 chapters are something that I really haven't seen anywhere else in the Stronghold franchise because I've played through Stronghold HD, I've played through Stronghold Crusader, I've played through Stronghold Legends. It's three of the games so far. I've started playing through Stronghold 3. None of those games had this the irregularity that Stronghold 2 has in terms of its mission structure. And the same applies to the economic campaign in Stronghold 2. In the economic campaign, you basically have a total of one chapter, but you should save after every successful mission is completed, because otherwise what can happen is if you fail one, you have to start over from the beginning again. I personally dislike this approach to it because it really relies heavily on the player to be monitoring their progress and making sure they save at the, pro at the proper moments, otherwise they lose possibly hours of progress because the mission is fairly long. And that's something that you don't see in any of the other Stronghold games. If you look at the military, I mean, the economic campaign for Stronghold HD, if you look at the military, um, I keep saying that wrong. If you look at the economic campaign for Stronghold 3, uh, both of them had very decent economic campaigns that were fun to play, but they didn't do this thing. They split them all up into their own individual missions or their own individual chapters, I guess you could say, which allowed you to carry on progress across multiple chapters, even if you lost one of them. You could just simply go back to the last chapter. That's something that Stronghold 2 just wasn't interested in doing, apparently. You might see me putting down man traps here, and there really isn't any purpose for that besides the fact that I find it kind of fun. I really wish there was an option that allowed you to sort of click and drag when it came to actually putting down man traps, because it would have, you'd hear a lot less can't place that there uh, warnings from the scribe. Oh, that would be one way I'd like to see man traps improved in going forward into the future. And this is like one of the more serious attacks from Edwin. You can see he has catapults now. And unfortunately, I really don't get to use my rolling logs at all. Like by the time the units got close enough to the wall, uh, my archers pretty much mowed them all down before the rolling logs could be of any effect. But I do, I do have to give my archers their kudos for mowing down all of those laddermen. Laddermen and Stronghold 2 are one of those units that really infuriate me just because of how spammy the AI is with them. Uh, it seems like the AI is overcompensating for how worthless laddermen were in strong, the original two Stronghold games. In the original two Stronghold games, you think about Stronghold uh, HD and Stronghold Crusader HD, laddermen were more of a liability to your army than an asset because if one ladder was pushed off while well, there were a whole bunch of troops on it, all those troops would immediately die. So I always hated laddermen in the original two Stronghold games, and it seems like Firefly decided to go ahead and overcompensate and make them really annoying in this one. Just so we are clear, everybody, kill them, kill them all. I want none left alive, not a peasant, not a lord, not a fly, not one. Kill them dead. All of them. Kill them dead. So this is one of those dialogues that makes me think the game was a little bit more lighthearted, uh, taking things a little bit less seriously, because even though the rat was kind of the idiot of previous Stronghold games, I don't think you can really compare him to just how, how dumb Edward acts a lot of the time. And there you can see some, some of my logs paying off finally. Knocked a few spearmen back, I guess. And their, our walls actually took some damage here. So Edwin got a little bit further than usual, but this is actually his last attack. Getting back to the point about laddermen, though, I, I just don't think that they should be allowed to go back to the siege camp for more ladders, because it results in them just being all over the place, on top of everything with ladders everywhere. Is that really... 
Is it really something you'd ever see in a real siege where the laddermen are continuing to go back even though the walls have already been breached, right? You have a couple of breaches in the wall. You don't need to continue to go back and get additional ladders, do you? Like maybe they sh they could pull out swords and get up on top of the walls and help defend the ladder from any units that are up there. That would be something that I would personally rather see because, and, and I know this is, this is just the AI really that does the ladder spam. But it, it does... It's one of those aspects of sieging that annoyed me because of just how all over the place those laddermen are. And be, because the archers will always target the laddermen before other stuff, and they're always so much cheaper. So in other words, I could have a bunch of catapults tearing down my wall, but you will have 50 laddermen swarming around the place, running with ladders, and my, ladder, my archers will never want to target those catapults because the laddermen are like a higher priority in terms of range targeting. Maybe that's what actually bothers me more about the laddermen, is how archers target them. Really, really haven't thought about it this in depth before. The monastery is repaired, and so is Sir William. We both cannot thank you enough. So, as you can see, much like in the uh, second chapter, they're the monks who are going to go ahead and leave. Apparently, they're off on another quest, and this mission cannot end. This chapter cannot end until those monks go off the map. Which leaves us the interesting question. Suppose Edwin's troops stopped them from leaving the map and killed them. Would this mission ever end? Coward! You are beginning to annoy me, royal champion! There's the big tower. <clears throat> what did he call you? Oh, I am sorry. Did he not tell you, Sir William? <clears throat> Does he speak the truth? You've said your piece, Edwin. Now leave us be. And that is victories. So this pretty much concludes the end of Chapter 5 for the military campaign in Stronghold 2. Thank you very much for watching as always, and I hope to see you next time.